All right, hello, another mini fix video. Um, I received this Sony K611S uh, three head tape deck with transport issues. Out of my house. Oh my god, David. Oh god. They murdered him. Oh my god. And I thought I'd have a quick pork around in it and it got the transport to bits and found something that's apparently quite common but not very commonly explained on the internet so I thought I'd take the transport out and have a look so I'll just take the, uh, the cover off the top there so the transport is obviously missing out of this uh, this system at the moment transport obviously sits in here and then all these cables are what attach to your motors and there is three cables that attach to this red connection here and this white connection here and this two pin connection here so after you've removed all them you can safely take the transport out this way it's easier if the tape deck is actually shut um, which it defaults to when you unplug it anyway so <laughs> there's not really a lot you can do about that all right so here we are i've got the transport uh, split into its major component parts um i don't really want to do a video on how to take it apart because i think if you are investigating taking a transport apart then you're pretty competent at taking a transport apart so inside here the component parts what we have is this wheel is called the mode select wheel um it's got a cam this this circular piece here which has to uh fit into a switch and you know, when you're rebuilding it, it's important that that fits into a switch otherwise it won't work i believe this transport is a tcm 200 sony transport it's used in various other cassette decks and whatnot. So this little belt on the side here uh, latches onto your mode select motor, which is uh, one of the two on here, which is this one. I think this is what's called your backup motor, and this is your main motor, which will uh, go into your drive capstan. Drive, it drives all the time when it's plugged in, which is a bit odd, but uh, it is what it is. This side of the mechanism here is uh, to control the electronic eject, which is what this arm's for, and it latches onto this arm. Uh, and this arm interacts with the mode select wheel, depending on where you are, to allow you to eject. So you can't eject halfway through playing when you, your tape's in, uh, inside the machine, basically. It's really pretty straightforward. Uh, this has quite got a little bit of wobble on it, which is, is fine, as far as I'm aware. It's important that when you rebuild the um, transport back together, it does say in the manual that this cam must be facing over here. And you have to be very careful that this arm, it's got a, a, a piece that sits in that groove there, which I'll take this out, let's see. So it's important that this bit on the bottom here sits into that groove. Because when you rebuild it, it won't work otherwise. So uh, when you're rebuilding, this goes on first, then this. You can put your mode select belt, which is a smaller belt. The manual states to sit it over these two pins and then you can pop it onto the motor when you've rebuilt it, which is quite handy. And this obviously is driven through your mode select wheel. So I'm getting ready to rebuild this, but I'll show what the actual problem was. So this is upside down at the moment. This flips over and sits on top of the mode select wheel there. And this is the electronic controls for the two motors one is your mode select motor and one is your i think it's called a backup motor i can't remember the actual name of it you've got three switches here these switches basically control uh the the, the status of the tape deck as in is, is the door open or closed these can be tested by the contacts on the back with a multimeter very easily uh, this wheel is what's going to go it's going to sit about here and you're going to put the belt over the top of it the issue that i had with this one is this switch here um, and it's a rotational switch that 
the uh, this little groove here this sits over the top of this so when you're rebuilding it's important that you get this inside this groove here and the manual states that the simplest way to do it is to line up this arrow with this line on the edge inside there is a really simple circuit board it's got five contacts and it's got a uh, rot it's a rotational switch much like a volume switch really on a, or a mode select switch on on the front of your amp or your tape deck and basically this was just all furred up inside and full of crap and crud so you can desolder these points remove the two screws here and here and it's held together basically through uh, like soldered plastic. The back of this, this outer part here is kind of plastic soldered onto the chipboard. So if you're very careful, you can flip it over, cut off the plastic tabs. It comes apart really easily. Give it a clean, put the top back on, and then just put a soldering iron back on the plastic tabs to stick it back together or some super glue or whatever. So uh, we're going to pop the two screws back into here. just to give it a bit more security like so and then what we're going to do is we're going to flip this piece over and we're going to sit it on top of there ensuring that uh, this is lined up with this okay so it's pretty straightforward this is very difficult to get back in if you have the door open so if the door's open this plastic wheel with the the height dependent cam on the top uh, it kind of wants to spring towards you, which makes it very difficult to stick the rest of the uh, the motor back on. So let me just zoom out a little bit while I do this. To be very gentle with those the switches on the top here for your tape type. Um, again, they can be easily tested, and what will happen is very def defective. Is basically a load of tape. And it just won't play anything whereas my issue was very strangely is that this mod select motor was just doing this blah, 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 and the sound effect is realistic as well it was just flipping backwards and forwards upon looking at it it looked like this was not meshing and it was catching and going like just judging back and forwards but if you put your fingers on it the motor itself was flicking backwards and forwards really quick and uh, and it was doing that from as soon as you power it on Right, so we're all lined up. If you look inside here, if I can. Um, very difficult to do. If you look uh, down there, we have that cam inside the switch. We have this arm sitting in the mode select wheel properly, sitting in there, this, 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 white bit moves up and down and it allows the tape to run inside it's more of a safety feature so when your head comes up um all controlled by that big more select wheel when your head come up when you've got to play the tape this also pops up and allows the the, the reel and the take up reel to turn your tape basically so now we've got that on it's all lined up you've got a screw to go in here you've got a screw to go in here and we have one here. There also is a cheeky one over here, uh, sorry, there, which is, <laughs> let me show you, there, which is an earth lead. All right, that's all screwed back together now. Don't forget to pop your belt onto your mud select wheel off the two black pins. Don't forget to attach your earth lead there, which goes all the way down to your uh, cables to the board inside the machine. So the next step is to put the, uh, the capstan in there. Right, so now you've got to get the belt on, and you can actually end up doing this one handed if you're clever. Um, possibly, it says. Right, once that's around the capstan there, just pop your main water plate into its returning holes, he says. It's very difficult to do one handed. Alright. And then you've got three screws, basically, one of which seems far too long, but I looked in the manual and it is the right screw. Um, it actually pokes out quite far on the other side of the mechanism, but it doesn't interfere with the tape, so, you know, it is what it is. So I'm going to uh, pop these screws back in here. And this one as well. As I say, for some reason, this mech likes to... Uh, 
it runs all the time. I don't really know why, but it does. And then we've got a little washer that goes on there. Let's put that. And then this screw is absolutely massive, but it's correct. It should be 25 mil according to the service manual. And then screw them down. All right, so I've got the tip. <coughs> Second, I've got a uh, transport back in position. Now I've just stuck these two screws on the top. And it's just a case of just unplugging everything now and you can test it now when i've put it in uh i've put it in with the door open because it's easier to get the door open so you can connect everything in here um there is a, a small plastic cog at the top here which is if we get my finger in this bit here you need to get this connected up which hides behind this bit which is done with two two screws all that is 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 a light the wire that goes from there uh, into here, it does nothing else but light up an LED. So, now what we're going to do is uh, re plug all this stuff in. Uh, they're all one time only plugs, so they only fit in one space. So, that one there is longer than this one. So, fire that one back in, and then we've got one for the motor control, and then there is the power for the open and close motor which is what if I can get it in one handed it's quite difficult to do that's the power for the open and close motor which is this one um, there we go. <coughs> that one's in and then it's connecting it up to the main board which is three plugs so you have got a white one over here this is a four pin plug and then you've got a red one, which is here. Also a four pin plug. And then you've got a two pin one over here. This two pin one is actually the most difficult one to get out once it's in. They clipped in on this side. Uh, it's just a case of just popping a clip up a tiny bit. These seem to come out fine. Maybe they've been pulled out a few times, I don't know. So, uh, yeah, I think we should turn this on and uh, see what happens so i'm not expecting amazing things to be honest with you uh I'll, I, the, hopefully i can edit in a video of what it was doing previous before i cleaned that uh that switch and then if it all works what we'll do is we'll pop this in there screw it down there's a very specific way you need to do it because if you don't do it one way uh, there's got some tabs at the bottom uh, these little plastic tabs just here if you don't seat them behind where they're supposed to be seated your tape gets stuck and it won't play so right i'll stick some power in it and we'll see what happens so that is powered up have we got everything in yeah right then that's a good sign it's not making a clacking noise is it going to close and open no okay well, that's interesting i might just need a bit of a reset inside then so down here this cog down here and this motor controls your open close mechanism it is turning looks like it's perhaps getting stuck but what is good is the um it isn't making a clacking noise what it was before so the mode select looks like we're good um, there's no tape in it so it's not going to do anything but it seems to me like it's not getting a signal that this is correctly shut yeah because what it's doing is when you press play it's it's actually trying to activate the motor to close it so it's physically closed but it's not hitting the limit switch I think so we'll pull the transport back off and see what we can do about it if you can hear that so if i press the play button now which would usually shut the mechanism i'm not going to press open close i'm pressing play yeah so it thinks it's not fully closed so that's all right we'll just have a quick look at the switch again <laughs> transport out again so i'm getting pretty adept at this so um let's see if we can see anything obvious as to why it's not doing it uh this is your main motor 
did I say open and close motor earlier? No, sorry, it's this one is your open and close motor. And, um, no, I'm lying, that's your mode select motor. <laughs> so, down in this gubbins down here, there is a large wheel. You can just see it there. So if you can see that wheel there, that does have a bit of black splodges on it, I'm afraid. Let's see if I can just get it to focus there. So that wheel, that switch is in. So it should recognise that that is shut, which is interesting. Uh, that is uh, the closed switch there. You can just see the, the black switch shown by a little bit of a silver surround there. So that is clicked in and shut. Okay, well that's... Let's pop it open and see if there's anything stuck. Right, so now that's stripped down again with everything out. These two gears are what control your eject mechanism. And they're on the spring, which is good. But this one seems stuck. Now whether there's something stuck in it, or whether there's something not going to play, it's very scrapey. Feels like there's something jammed in it. So we're gonna take that off and give it a bit of clean, I think. And see where we can go. That's nice and free. Um, as this spins, it touches this cam. <laughs> as this spins, it touches this cam, which forces it down, which pushes your door open. So let's get out and give it a clean. Right, so I think that was just a bit of misalignment. So now that that's free to be pushed up and down, you can see how that affects the, uh, it's called something ridiculous, like a presentation bar or something. Um, so that's free. Okay. All right, so spot Paul's obvious mistake. So when I've been resoldering this switch, I have caught the, I believe it is a shut switch for the door. I melted the arm. So I'm gonna to have to file it down a little bit so it slides in and out properly because it's getting stuck now. So that's a Paul problem. But let's see what we can do. Right, what a massive hassle that was. So I ended up swapping the switch out with one from a scrap CD player. It's basically a limit switch. And I had a Sony DVD player and I managed to swap it out. Now I've tested it with a multimeter and it seems to be working. So I've rebuilt the transport again. And fingers crossed, this is going to be successful. I'm actually so confident it's going to be successful. I've replaced the light cover inside there, which is this uh, blue LED. This is simply an LED light for inside where your tape sits. So you can see where your tape's at nice and clearly. So let's stick it in and see what happens. Right then, let's get these plugs put in. This is, I believe, the longest one. And then the next longest one is that one on the left, on my left. That one is for the motors, power leads in there for the motor and the light is on there. And we've simply got our red lead. So a red plug, a clear plug, and a two pin plug, which is the actual pain in the ass to get in and out. He says. Okay. So everything's in. It's like one in the morning at the moment, and um, I'm really hoping this works because for today i have lost the motivation if it doesn't work <laughs> well let's see all right then so power's going on and here we go all right it's reset itself let's see if it opens no 
spot the obvious mistake. I haven't put the belt on. Let's put a light on there. <laughs> the belt for the mode wheel is sat on its little pins still. Hey, I don't know. So let me just isolate the power. Alright, power's off. Let's just pop that belt across. If I can just do it. There we go. Oh man. Nah, I was ready to give up for the day there. But let's try again. Okay, fingers crossed. Deep breath. Power on. Alright. The moment of truth. Our oh, light is on. I really hope this works. That's good. Let's see if it shuts. And it shuts. Amazing. Let's go get a tape. Alright, so unfortunately I don't have this hooked up to anything. Uh, but if this does play, we should see the levels. So we've got ourselves a nice old reliable D90. I thought that wasn't going to work then. All right, it's registered as a type one. Uh, let's see what happens. Hmm, nothing. Hmm. So I wonder if it's not registered with these switches at the top that we've got a tape in. Because although it says type 1, it usually needs a couple of switches to register. And it doesn't sound like anything's happening on that side. So it does try to play and then doesn't do anything. And it's interesting now that it thinks there's a tape in it, doesn't want to eject now either. Let's do the old ON OFF switch. Hmm. Well, we got somewhere with the tape opening and closing. Um, obviously, you know, it doesn't want to play either. So, the only thing I can think of is these switches across the top, if I'm honest with you. Um, it's going to play and then not playing. Hmm. Okay. All the buttons work, which is good. Um, let's see if we can somehow eject this tape. Might have to persuade the transport to open. Well, let's isolate the power and see what we can do. Alright, so I think I found the problem is the white arm there was not engaged properly with the large grey more select wheel. Um, I think simply through putting it back together, it had just not aligned properly. So um, it's on now. I think the tape is still in the transport. And I think that it was trying to reset itself there, but couldn't because the arm wasn't aligning properly. But we're aligned now, so I'll put this transport back in again for about the 50th time and give it a go. Alright man, it is like 25 past 1 and um, this is the last time we're going to test it tonight. So fingers crossed everything goes okay. So, here we go. Alright, not got any strange noises. The tape's ejected now, which is good. 
fucking zipped forward a little bit there, which was quite nice. And hey, <laughs> there we go. All right, tips playing perfectly. It's showing the correct type. Hmm. Just decided to stop that. Let's see, let's see what happens now. Let's put the tip on and see what happens. There we go. We'll just have to play with it for a little bit longer, see what happens. Tip seems to be doing what it wants to do. Count is counting. Uh, the last thing to do is get it hooked up, see what it sounds like. And uh, see where we go from here. I know this was recorded on C. And the levels are about right as well. Should be just sat at plus two. Okay. So we'll pop our cover back on. And then tomorrow we will get it on the amplifier. See what it sounds like. And hopefully we can enjoy it for what it is. That has been a mission and a half. All right, I didn't really record this, but I thought I'd actually add something in here. And uh, what was happening was is, and, and I've found that on many audio groups, people have had this tape and this transport, it's very common. So what was happening is the tape would play for two or three minutes and it would just stop. Uh, and the, 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 the reason for that is on the back of the reels themselves, I didn't video this, but I should have done. On the back of the reels themselves, there is uh, three small mirrors. Okay, and when you put the transport together, there are two sensors on stalks. They look like big uh, diodes, and those sensors go very close to the reels. And what they're for is they're, they're light emitting sensors, and they uh, detect the backs of the reels as they go round, and uh, the the light will bounce from the, the sensors onto these little small mirrors and go back and that, that, that's how the, the, the system detects whether uh, the tape has ended or not so when your tape comes to an end the reels stop it detects that the reels have stopped and it'll stop the system and stop the transport um, and the same for rewinding fast forwarding and what happens is when I took it back to back apart again all the mirrors were dirty they, were, they had bits of grease and fluff and all sorts of them so I got some IPA got a cotton bud and cleaned those little mirrors up on the back and that completely rectified it that it would play a tape until the end of a tape basically so it's, it, those sensors seem very important to this transport for it to run for longer uh, than a couple of minutes or a couple of seconds and also they're important to detect when you come to the an end of a tape as well uh, i've seen maybe two or three facebook posts on, on a few of the audio repair groups and it's been a case of um just basically that exact thing and i know all three of them have successfully solved this problem with this tape deck so if you're having that problem with this deck if it runs for a little bit and then stops you need to disassemble that transport and when you take the the, the main transport part off when you take the motors off the back of it you can see down into the backs of the reels and you'll see those little mirrors and just give them a good clean with ipa or a windoline or something like that and get them amazing as clean as you can possibly get them and that should solve all of your issues with that all right then so we've got all this hooked up um and uh, my other tape deck's just sat there at the moment so i'm going to give this a bit of a test i've got uh unfortunately i don't have a pre-recorded tape i have one that's been recorded on this deck which i'm almost certain is set up perfectly you know it's been set with a test tape and azimuth test and all the rest of the stuff but this tape has been through a couple of walkmen so i'm not convinced it's the best quality um but at least give us a bit of a an idea as to what the crack is so it's been recorded on this deck which is under dolby c so we've got dolby c on there and oh sorry i forget, I forget that that's not a thing on this and uh it's loaded up quite nicely it will select dolby c and we'll see where we go <laughs> Alright, I just pause the music again so I don't fall foul of YouTube. So I sat and listened to that there for about five minutes and uh, there's definitely quite a lot of uh, wow and flutter going on. 
Um, it's very clear when the tape first starts and then as it goes on you're losing a fair bit of treble. Not a lot but enough to be noticeable. Uh, I've tried this in the various positions on the tape. Now the pinch roller that I've got in at the moment is not a replacement. It's basically been pulled out. I've had some uh, rubber renew on it, give it a good clean but uh, it's not new. So I understand that these are uh, quite susceptible to tape skew if the pinch roller isn't amazing. So I've ordered myself a new pinch roller and that's probably going to take about a week to come because I think it came from Ukraine. But they've been, uh, I've been told that they are the better ones to fit. But what was interesting is if uh, the, the, it wasn't too bad on that side of the tape, but if I flip the tape over and play the other... Ooh. Want to drop it? Yeah, so if I flip the tape over and stick the other side on, this is significantly worse. Bit of a failure there. You can actually hear the treble get lost after the first second of the tape playing just a little bit, but this side is a lot worse. Instantly. Instantly losing all that treble there straight away and it's even noticeable on the meters as well that it's just not playing as well as it should be the, the the levels are correct with what I record at I generally record at about plus two with nubs into plus three um, Now whether that will translate over from a Kenwood to a Sony deck. I have no idea But that side strangely is is worse Now obviously that's two ish that could be two separate issues one is that the azimuth is incorrect on the recording deck which is this one i'm not convinced that's the case because uh, i've recorded tapes on here and then i've fired them through various other tape decks and walkmans and whatnot and although there's a little bit of a difference with it, the variations of dolby and that um the actual sound and noise coming out is pretty good uh, is is good and there's no pretty about it it's totally fine so that's going to point us towards azimuth issues with this transport uh, now whether that is a, a tape alignment issue or it is the fact of the the pinch roller uh, potentially being you know angled strangely you know pulling the tape over the head in the wrong direction it remains to be seen but I think what I'm going to do is wait for the pinch roller to come uh, fit the new pinch roller and then <laughs> my washing machine's just going to fast spin there and then we'll see where we go from there Okay, so we are about now, I would say, two months past uh, my initial investigations into this tape deck. Uh, I've had a house move, uh, some equipment changes and things like that, so there's a lot got in the way. Uh, some postal issues, should we say, and um, it's now repaired. So what I'm going to do is just go through the process of what I did and how I repaired it and take it from there. So... Uh, from the last segment that I did we were losing a lot of treble with, when we were playing the tape okay so uh, that could point to a couple of things but mainly it's down to the fact that the tape isn't going across the playhead uh, in, in the center of the head allowing the treble and the bass to be to be equal so that's a, a, an azimuth problem uh, or should we say a head alignment problem um, now I wasn't convinced that the head need adjusting because it's obviously been fine nobody touched it and the thread lock and whatever else was uh, in place for the for, for the head so I wasn't convinced with that so something was making it uh, travel across the playhead incorrectly so in order to um, to view that problem I made what's called a mirror tape okay so a mirror tape, and this is the, the, potentially the worst mirror tape ever created, but it does the job. A mirror tape is a, a tape with a mirror inside it at a 45 degree, degree angle. You can just see my, my, my glorious hairline there. Um, and it allows you to view the tape from the top as your tape is playing. And you can see any skew or you can see how it's sitting on the head as you play it. Okay, so I made this. Um, I, I couldn't find it on eBay, I see, which was quite interesting. But uh, it's just a case of unscrewing a, a, a cassette, cutting a bit out, and adding a mirror. So if you can just see in that mirror there, you can actually see that the, the, this, this line here is actually the tape as we're looking down on the tape. 
which means that you can view in your cassette deck like this straight in and look down and you can see the tape traveling over the head as it's playing so this was essential really because what this pointed out was is as soon as the tape started playing within half a second or so the roller was skewing the tape off um, towards me which meant that the treble edge of the tape because of the, that's the way that the, the tape is recorded was uh, it, it was being pulled over very slightly wasn't aligned on the head and therefore I was losing treble and the reason I was losing it after a second was because it's aligned for the first second till the roller starts pinching the tape and then pulls it across it was particularly bad on the other side of the tape because that was the start of the tape and therefore was a little slacker so it was dragging it over a little bit more so there's that was the solution so this uh, I'll do a little bit of a demonstration of this if I can we've got our our deck here now so to demonstrate then so this uh, this plastic uh, cover just pops off your tape deck it says and just slides up and most tape decks you'll find do have a, like a viewing area specifically for this um, to happen so we're popping our tape in and I'll see if I can get a good demonstration you can actually see the tape there and on the right hand side is the capstan um, it's quite difficult to point out but uh, on the right hand side there this is the capstan here and you're looking down so this is a great tool to be able to let you to uh, to see how your tape is sitting on your heads and therefore diagnose any problems with playback uh, so that obviously involved um, replacing the, the pinch roller so I had actually uh, ordered a pinch roller and I said it was coming from Ukraine but it wasn't it was coming from Slovakia uh, I ordered it on eBay I think it was about uh, 10 pounds delivered which I thought was pretty reasonable to honestly for the, for, the, for the correct one for a good one and it just didn't turn up it never turned up uh, for a man it must have been six weeks i gave the seller messaged them and all the rest of the stuff and said like look um what's the crack it's got nothing absolutely nothing so in the end i think i just put a claim in refunded that and i went on a website called fixmyaudio.com i think it was called and it paid seven quid and it was here within about five days it was amazing uh, and coincidentally that was from slovakia as well but it was a different seller so maybe they just make these in slovakia i'm not entirely sure but that was the cause of, of the problem. And since then, it has... Um, playback has been absolutely fine. The, 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 the quality of it is, is superb, no matter what tape I put in. So we'll give this a, a bit of a go here. What we've got here, we've got a, uh, uh, an AD90. I can only play a couple of seconds because of YouTube's copyright strike potential. Uh, but the playback was amazing and, and remains amazing, to be honest. So... Levels are correct. Sounds great. So, uh, so, so that bit was sorted basically. So, you know, what's the first thing you want to do when you get a nice free head deck? You want to start recording. I got myself a, a, a big wedge of Type 2 tapes as well, which is quite nice. And when to start recording, uh, you know, it was. was almost recording fine and so what i tried to do is uh this deck has a, a calibration function on it and i'll go through it actually because if you if you're looking to repair these decks you think you can see what the crack is uh, a basic calibration function is your sticky taping you've got a, a bias level switch here and this is very specific to the tape as well i found so depending on what kind of tape you use what make one model type one type two type four whatever uh, the bias can be can be very different so uh stick your bias in the record level up to the top there and at the moment these these meters are left and right so that uh, this is your, your essentially volume level meters when playback and it is happening and when recordings happen that so um we have our calibration button over here and what this allows you to do is set up the bias according to what the deck thinks should be correct now sometimes this has been a little bit off and there's been comments on a few posts that this has been a little bit off on this deck as well so uh i'll go for a calibration now just to make it simple it is in the user manual and there is some videos about calibration and whatnot but i'll show you where i got my uh, my issue and i'll tell you what calibration does as well so if you press the calibration button you notice that this changes to high and low as opposed to uh your levels of recording of left and right and you have a record calibration indicator there 
So what this does is, this will aid you to bias when recording. And a bias is a balance between high and low. So if you up the bias, you might gain uh, your higher sounds and lose your lower sounds. And then uh, if you put it the other way, you'll gain your lower sounds and lose your higher sounds. So uh, in order to do on this, press calibration, press record, it gives, brings this up, and then you press play. Okay, so that is actually the recording uh, two tones onto the tape. And it is also listening to it as well with the third head. Uh, sorry, with the, well, I suppose it is the third head, that's right. So these levels, it does say these levels do take a, a minute to, to level out, which they kind of do and don't. And these tapes aren't new tapes either. This is a lot better with a new tape. Than this is a, a pre, it's already been recorded on a, a used tape. So, uh, as you can see, our higher isn't recording as uh, as high as our low levels on the tape. The and, and that's where your bias comes in. So, I'm going to twist my bias around now and try and match those levels. And that was pretty straightforward. It's floating a little bit there. Uh, yeah, that's good. And then the volume of it is the recording calibration level. So, I'm going to adjust my recording calibration uh, recording level until we get to where we want to be and there we go so the deck's actually calibrating it's still twittering a little bit it's have a little bit more of a play and a lot of that will be a bit of flutter on the tape as well but that's i mean that's pretty good that's the type 2 tape that is exactly where i want it to be um so you should really do this before you record it's still going now it's good to you can't listen to this while it's while it's doing this. Uh, it specifically states in the manual that you can't do it, um, which is fine. But you can play it back. So I will stop that, give it a little bit of a rewind, and then play it. If you can hear that. And that's the tone that it's recording uh, onto the tape, listening back to it, comparing it, and it, it, it knows what's going in should... Uh, it, it knows what should come out should match what's going in and that's where your calibration comes from so my previous deck was a kenwood it had auto calibration on it which was quite a snazzy little thing actually but this gives you a little bit more fine tuning you know if you have a uh, i was recording an album the other day that was uh, what was it uh bow to hell bow to hell is known for being an absolutely awful recording and it's really really uh uh, the treble's very high on it compared to the bass, and you can bias it out a little bit and have a bit of a tweak yourself and a play and record cassettes however you want to. So that's great. So going back to my previous point as to when I started recording, um, the levels were just awful, like all over the place. I could not get a bias on this whatsoever, and I just could not work out why. Uh, you know, I tried I tried uh, used tapes, brand new tapes, and, and it was flapping about all over the place. So I thought to myself, right, I'll have a listen, I'll record something, have a listen to it and find out what is going on. And I recorded something, listened to it, and it still had a ghost of the previous recording, which meant that it wasn't erasing it properly, which eventually led me to find that uh, the erase head, where it plugs into the, the board with plugging it and unplugging it, the uh, the soldering for the, 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 the female part of the plug on the board, had been a bit dry and had come off basically so it was just a simple resolder of that it's a small two pin white plug you can follow it back from the erase head resoldered it and since then it has been absolutely spectacular it's been a really nice deck um i i have no other real issues with it now this is now my main deck um i've recorded many things off it from spotify i've recorded things from cd from radio uh and it's been excellent uh, they, they do uh, every now and again uh, they do get a little bit of a bad rep with um the the clunking i think somebody called it old clunky or something like that due to the noise of ejecting which you can i personally don't have an issue with that it does get a bit frustrating when you forget that it's in a, an automated eject but it's you can uh, press play or record or whatever and it'll also suck the tape in if it's if you're waiting for it to to play again so so yeah so this has ended up as been ended up as my main deck i got it cheap as chips with a fault and i think uh these is going for still around 200 quid i watched one the other day that had a similar problem and it still went with however many faults uh for 111 quid still needing a repair so these are bringing great money still um 
so uh, so that's it. it kind of brings us to the end of our video quite nicely uh i'd recommend this deck massively the <laughs> obviously if you have issues with them then um you need to know how to fix them but real it, realistically everything that i've fixed has been like a service issue it hasn't really been anything major there's been no ca capacitors knackered there's been nothing in the transport that's snapped or broken it's been dirty contacts it's been replacement of a pinch roller and a and a, a little bit of soldering needing repairing which to be honest could have been my fault from plugging and unplugging the, the transport maybe must have done it 20 times uh or maybe exaggerating 10 times and i could have been a bit ham-fisted with it and, and not realized so um that's it really probably on to the next one now there's, there's, there's another one up there which i need servicing that's the 70s all in one uh so i'm going to get out of service next whether i'll put it on youtube i'm not sure but uh yeah it it, it fits in quite well and plays great music so if you're thinking of buying one I recommend it. If you're thinking of buying one that spares repair, um, it, it's been pretty straightforward to fix. The parts have been available and it's been a joy to work with, actually. So thanks very much and maybe I'll see you on the next one. Bye.